What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and today I've got another video for you on the Google Cloud Compute Platform. Basically in my previous video I showed you how you can connect to your virtual machine using PuTTY via Windows. Instead of using this page over here followed by the SSH button to use this over here, it's a ton easier to use PuTTY to go ahead and run commands, etc, etc from your own PC remotely. As you may or may not know, the easiest way to get files in and out of your virtual server is by using the little cog wheel in the top right of this screen over here and hitting upload file or download file. Now, of course, this uses your browser's transfer window as such. And if we go download file, we have to put in a fully qualified path, meaning say whatever folder followed by whatever file, you'll have to remember it as is. And as far as I know, you can only download one file at a time. That's where zip and unzip commands come in really useful, but there is something even quicker and better than this. And among the help docs, it's recommended under transferring files to instances, transferring files using WinSCP on Windows workstations. Of course, if you're not using Windows, then this may not be an option for you. Of course, there's also another one for SCP on Linux and Mac. However, I won't be going through this, and above it, they seem to only have command line ones like the G Cloud or the one that's built into the SSH browser interface. But of course, WinSCP is probably the most fleshed out and useful one that I can imagine. First of all, you'll need to download and install WinSCP. So I'll click this link over here and it'll also be linked down in the description below. Once you're on this page, we'll scroll down and find downloading. Underneath it, we can obtain it from this link and we can click download WinSCP for Windows. The download will then start and I'll go ahead and click it as soon as it pops up so we can run it once it's done downloading. I'll hit run and I'll also click install for all users and hit yes when prompted for admin. But of course you don't need to do that. I'll hit accept and I'll leave it as typical unless you wanna make it custom. Next, and I'll use the commander which is a split view interface with your computer on the left, the foreign computer on the right, much like FileZilla. If you prefer having a separate windows for both, you can see the pros and cons for picking between the two here. So I'll leave it as commander, I'll hit next and install. Next up, we have this over here. You have stored sessions and sites in the PuTTY SSH client and FileZilla FTP client. Do you wish to import them? I'll hit yes. Then I have the option to choose a program, PuTTY, FileZilla, known hosts, but of course I'll be using PuTTY. In my previous video, I went through installing and setting that up, linking it to your Google Cloud virtual machines. So I'll be importing that one that we have saved over here. I'll click on it and then I'll hit OK. Once I've done that, I'll uncheck the Getting Started page. I'll leave the Launch WinSCP option checked and I'll hit Finish so it starts up straight away. Then we have this pop up over here and we can choose to set up a new site or simply use our saved settings for our Google virtual machine. Because I have them saved in PuTTY and I imported them here, all I need to do is click a login or the drop down, and I can choose to open it in PuTTY as well, which is rather useful for running commands while you're transferring files. I'll close that. Then I'll click on new session, followed by Google, and then I'll hit login. Then it searches for host, authenticates, uses our public key that we created in the previous video. As you can see, we now have file access to the server. So I have my folders over here, a zip that I was previously using to download and upload these two folders, and a bunch of other files over here. Now, of course, if you don't have this saved in PuTTY, there is a way of adding it yourself. So in the very top left, I'll go to new session. But of course, if you didn't log into something in the first place, we'll just make sure to click new site. Next up, we'll leave the file protocol as SFTP. But of course, you can change it to one of these below. Then the host name will be the same as our virtual machine server. Now, of course, if you haven't picked a persistent IP, then this will change. Either way, I'll open up the compute cloud, find my node, and I'll select the external IP and copy it. I'll then paste it into hostname. And then next, we also need a username. Now, the easiest way to get this is to head to your console and click the SSH button. Once you've clicked it, we'll wait for it to connect. And then we'll see this over here. So it's using part of my email as my username, followed by at ZA Collective, which is the name of my virtual machine. So I'll select everything before the at, and I'll copy it. The way to copy it off of the Google Cloud console is just to select. And as you can see, there's little scissors popping up onto the screen, meaning that we've copied it. I'll minimize out of the browser and I'll paste it into where it says username. Then I'll make sure to click the advanced button. And on the left hand side, we'll go to SSH, followed by authentication. Then where it says private key file, I'll hit the three dots next to it and I'll navigate to where my private key is. So we need to select our private key file. So I'll simply click on it 
and hit open. Once we've done that, we can hit OK. After we're done with that, we can hit save, give it a name, and set a folder if you so wish, and possibly even create a desktop shortcut. I'll hit OK, select it on the list, and I'll hit login. It'll then exchange details with the server, and we'll have file access to the server itself. I've gone ahead and made a temporary file on my desktop over here, just to show you how simple it is to get files on and off of the server. I'll take the zip over here, drag and drop it across, and then I'll hit OK. But of course, you can also choose to transfer it in the background and not have anything show on your screen. But I'll do this. And as you can see, we're now downloading with an unlimited download speed cap. And we download as fast as we can. Then opening up the folder, we can see that I have f.zip and inside of it are the two folders that I went ahead and zipped up for transfer earlier. Now, of course, if you want to get something onto the server, it's as simple as creating a new file or simply finding one on your local PC and dragging and dropping it across as such. It'll then upload it and you'll find it on your server. If I go ahead and hit Control P, I'll open up a putty window. And if I were to type ls for list, followed by a vim test.txt, you'd see that we're now inside of the text file that we just uploaded to the server. So it's super simple to get files on and off of your server, and it's very similar to FileZilla. Keep in mind that if you're doing a lot of file synchronization with a lot of files on your virtual machine, then doing it this way might be a little bit slow if you have a couple thousand files because it has to go through and query each one, which will take some time to say the least. The best way to do it is by using something that works with differences, much like GitHub or the git command in your terminal, meaning that you can sync only the changed files, new files and deleted files, and then go ahead and download them off GitHub or something like that on your main PC just to keep things synced. And of course, while you're transferring multiple files back and forth, you get the option to overwrite or copy, duplicate, etc, etc, and even append. But while you're transferring lots of files, you'll also find this down here, which is the speed limit in kilobytes per second. Hitting the drop down, we can change it from anywhere between 8 megabytes per second down to 8 kilobytes per second, which is incredibly useful. I haven't used this program enough to learn where this is in the options, but this is a super basic crash course that's probably going to work for you. But anyways, that's about it. This is what I'll be using to transfer data back and forth. It's incredibly easy compared to the browser method with that SSH console over there, and it's what I'll be using from now on. Anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot. I hope you found this video interesting, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.